The following program is classified G. It's suitable for all ages. We would like to remind our viewers that the views expressed in this program by our participating guests are solely viewpoints of them who take part and does not reflect the views and beliefs of the Verena Media Network. Good evening and welcome to Gen XYZ where we discuss issues pertaining to our country's youth. Tonight our focus is on something that's not exactly a youth issue but something important to this country as a whole. There's a youth angle to it and I want to get into the discussion with my guest today. But uh, today's topic is about the Right to Information Act. Now the commission of the RTI is to expire by the end of October and the president is expected to appoint a new commission by September. The reason for this conversation is to raise awareness on the RTI as you and I do have many benefits. Now I need to emphasize that at no particular point of time has the current government nor the president has in any capacity mentioned that they are not interested in the RTI commission or for what it stands for. Clearly the president at many occasions raised the importance of this commission and there is intentions of continuing this. Let's get clarity into this topic and also how the youth can benefit from such a piece of legislature. I am glad to welcome Lakujay Bandara, the programs manager at Transparency International Sri Lanka. So let's just uh, sort of directly get into the topic of the right to information. Now, a lot of people will have different ideas about what it is, what function it plays. We really need to get into the details of this. But before that, how exactly did this conversation start in the first place? Like Vijay, how did we come to this point of having it enacted as an act and, you know, have multiple gazettes then amending it? How did we come to this state? Yeah, uh, first of all, Daniel, I, I mean, let me thank you for like uh, inviting to this particular program. So uh, to answer to your question, right, uh, so this uh, particular act, uh, RTI Act, we call it RTI Act, and this was enacted in 2016. Even though it was uh, enacted in 2016, the conversation for, you know, like this uh, right actually started in 1990s. So uh, in 1990s, even like, you know, parliamentarians and also CSO, like uh, civil society sector and also journalists, these all these uh, people actually talked about and also demanded uh, this particular right. However, we had to like wait for like, uh, you know, like more than a decade to, uh, you know, get the bill passed. So uh, when it uh, when the bill was drafted, I, I think uh, it was actually influenced by the Indian law, uh, because we because in uh, in India it was I think uh, enacted in two thousand uh, in, in in two thousand, and uh, we had to like look at how that RTI mm -hmm. uh, uh, law uh, function, so function yeah. and also when we enacted our one, it was actually a very good law, very good piece of law, and it actually ranked. Um, fourth of the fourth among the uh, other RTI laws in the world. Mm -hmm. So that means we have a, like a that great is based on, uh, transparency is evaluation. I know actually or? this was done by a, like this is a, this is actually ranked by another international okay. uh, organization. Okay. So according to their ranking, uh, we actually uh, in the fourth position among the other RTI laws uh, in the world. Mm -hmm. So, um, so uh, if, if I talked about like, uh, so that's how it evolved and I, that's how it came to the, uh, you know, like uh, came to... To an act and enact. then finally to yes. the parliament. Yes, and exactly. And discourse within society. If, from that point onwards, how do, how do you see the provisions as of today? Because con a contentious topic, granted yeah. it has been um, a public debate for a while. The provisions, particularly as you said, I think uh, when we had our discussion, it was it's a it's a large document. It yes, is it is exactly. something that encompasses a large area, uh, awards multitude of rights to people. People might not be clear about yeah. what these rights are. What exactly are these provisions? How do you enter that? Yes. Uh, so first of all, uh, Danita, like we have to look at the constitution, right? So in 2017, uh, uh, with uh, I mean uh, when the right to information came, it also uh, became a part of the constitution as well. Now it's a fundamental right of the people, right? So through the uh, RTI law, 
every citizen in this country get access to all the information held by the public authorities, right? So as I said to you, like to, before 2017, the secrecy was the norm, right? So even a simple communication between uh, two different, uh, you know, agencies, uh, public uh, authorities, was not disclosed to the people, right? But now it has changed. Now citizens has access to information. So as I said to you, like it's a fundamental law, fundamental right of the uh, of the people, and also through the RTI Act, as you said, it gives uh, it it tells the process of how you can get the information, right? And also it talks about the commission, their powers as well mm. as yeah. well. I I, I need right? to give you some separate time to talk about the commission. We'll go yes. into the details pertaining to that. Um, before we get there, something interesting that you touched on that I want to get a clarification now, you say that this is entrusted through the constitution. Yes. So the question then lies, uh, I think you touched on it briefly, uh, about what the RTI or the specific act adds mm. to yeah. the rights that are interested in the constitution. Because a, a brief question would be, okay, if, if we already have the right, why specifically entrust it further or like further recognize it through an act or something of a yes. form of an asset? Like how does, how does that work? Yes. So, uh, e so e even though it, it is, uh, you know, recognizing the constitution as a right, the process has not been laid down in the constitution okay. because it's a basic law. Mm -hmm. It's a basic law, right? So the process of like getting information and how uh, what the uh, what the public authority should do in that kind of a situation. So all the process, the entire process has been laid down in the particular act, RTI Act, right? So in order like, uh, I'll, uh, let me like touch on like few, uh, you know, provisions, important yeah, yeah. Uh, feature, uh, features or the provisions of the act as well. So if you look at the preamble of the RTI Act, it says this particular act was introduced to, uh, you know, foster a culture of transparency and accountability in the public institutions. Mm -hmm. And also it goes on to say that this can be used to fight corruption, increase uh, uh, increase uh, transparency and also good governance, right? So that preamble itself, you know, shows the fact that like how much, Im how important is the RTI law, right? Mm. And if you look at the section, like as I said to you, like RTI Act says that people or the citizen can access to uh, information held by the public authorities. And if you look at the uh, interpretation given to the uh, uh, public authorities, it's very, very big, you know, it's, it, it, it's very, it includes, uh, you know, like all the ministries, provincial councils, parliament, uh, presidential secretariat, and also even all the educational institutes. And also, uh, interestingly, non-governmental organizations are also, are also, no, also comes under the public authorities. Mm -hmm. So therefore, people or the citizens in this country now has you know, unlimited access to the information. So when we say citizen, even a student can ask for information, right? Let me get you an example from our experience, right? So, uh, Danidu, let me ask you a question, right? Do you know your all level uh, marks? Yes. Right? Yeah. You know the grade, but not the marks. Not the marks, yes. Not the marks, right? Yeah, exactly. Yes, A level, the same. same. If you are, I'm also from, um, I'm, I graduated from uh, University of Colombo, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know the, I, I know the grades, but I don't know the marks. marks. But through the right to information law, actually even students can ask for marks. Mm -hmm. Even for the, even in India, in India, they have asked for, you know, answer scripts as well. So mm -hmm. that's how important and how, you know, how important that RTI law to the people, you know. Mm -hmm. And also it has like other provisions like, you know, some, um, some um, informations are protected. For an example, if it is uh, relating to, uh, let's say national security or the defense, then those are sensitive information. True. So they can be rejected. Yeah. If it is personal information, they can be rejected. And uh, if it is uh, relating to any uh, medical condition or medical reports of a person, then that can be rejected. So there are like, uh, you know, like th there's, a, there's a provision that the public authority can use to reject the information as well. But I want to like, you know, you know stress on this fact even that provision can be overridden. That means, let's say for an example, I'm asking some information from you, right? You are a public authority. Uh, and if I ask you any personal information, you can say, no, look, this is personal information, we cannot disclose it. That's under section five, right? But if 
I can show you the fact that this is in public interest, right? The harm caused by the disclosure of the information, that personal information is less than the, you know, uh, public interest. If I can actually uh, establish that fact, even personal information can be disclosed. So that's very powerful. And also um, another salient feature that um, RTA Act has the severability, right? Uh, that means, uh, let's say I ask you like few questions, like mm -hmm. few information, and if the if the uh, public authority feels like you know uh, some information cannot be disclosed, then they can actually redact those so information possibly. and they can you know like give the rest of the information. Mm -hmm. Likewise, there are like so many like salient features, so many important uh, provisions within the. Uh, you know, uh, yeah. RTI Act. Yeah. Um, just to get a sort of like a segue to our next segment, when there is a question with the RTI law, yes. first authority, first competent authority we go to is the commission or the courts? Where How does it, how do we settle it? Uh, when you say a uh, question... As in, uh, if let's say uh, the public authority says this is private information or this yes. is, uh, wouldn't, wouldn't be up to public interest hmm. and you want to contest that, where do you go to? So. So, according to the law, when the law was passed in 2016, uh, right, uh, every public authority had to appoint uh, information officer and also a designated officer, right? So, first of all, I have to go to the information officer with the RTA application or, I mean, there are like, you know, you don't have like, you know, you have to send it yeah. like the application, right? So, he or she, that information officer, has the power to decide whether to release or not to release information, right? Okay. If they have a question, obviously they can actually, obviously they can go to the commission, they can get advice. Mm -hmm. But within the law, information officer has been given the full authority to decide whether to give the information or not, right? And let's say if if uh, if the if the uh, application is rejected, then you can work your way up. Like, you know, you can then go to the designated officer and then go to the commission. Okay. And then commission decides whether, I mean, looking at both sides, they will decide whether this information should be disclosed or not. So okay. that's how it works. All right. I think uh, that actually gives us a good uh, segue into the next big topic that we need to talk about, which is the functioning and the operation of the commission. Yes. Let's uh, go into details about this. We are in conversation with Lak Vijay Banda, the Programs Manager at Transparency International mm -hmm. within Sri Lanka. Stay with us. This is Jen XYZ. to Jen XYZ. We are in conversation with the Programs Manager of Transparency International, Sri Lanka Lakwiche Mandar. A um, uh, few other things that we need to really yeah. clarify now. Um, the Commission. Yes. Um, another point of contention would be the functionality, the operation of this, how uh, the, one would say, the pseudo-judiciary power that it also has. Uh, and if we are to question that, where do you go to from that point onwards? Just give us an introduction to how the commission functions as of today. Yes, uh, so when it comes to the uh, the whole process of uh, right to information, the commission plays a very you know important role, right? So uh, if you look at the appeal process, so let me like touch on like few powers that they have, like you know. Uh, so they have this, uh, you know, they have the right to hear appeals, right? As I said you before, right? So, if the appeals goes to the commission level, so they are the arbitrator, they become the arbitrator between the government and the citizen. So, they decide what information should be disclosed and what information can be rejected, right? So, that's one power. That's the main power that they have or function that they have. And also, they have prosecution powers as well. Mm -hmm. So, for an example, let's say uh, a public authority gives a you know, gives uh, insufficient uh, information or alter or destroy the, the information that they have, right? Or let's say they don't uh, comply with or they don't give effect to the decisions of the RTI commission or they fail to come before the commission and, you know, like uh, appear before the commission. In that kind of situation, actually the commission can prosecute them. They can initiate action actions against them in the court of law, right? 
So if you look at these two powers, right, these two main powers that they have, it's very crucial for the smooth functioning of the RTI. So if the commission is not there, if, if an independent commission is not there, then this whole RTI process collapse, right? So uh, in one way, they, uh, they, they decide what to release and not to release. And on the other way, on the other hand, they also uh, they also kind of like like overlook or kind of uh, you know tell you know how to like you know smoothly uh, you know like uh, apply this apply the, yeah. the law yeah. and they overlook like how the you know public authorities are you know like uh, doing this process you know like whether they whether they are complying with the RTI law mm -hmm. so that's why we need a uh, an independent commission. Uh, uh, yeah, under the law. Yeah. Um, something that we want to touch and to put into a mandate within this program also is it's, it's particularly the youth that we target. Now, this pro as in getting the RTI functioning, it has, one would say, the youth are very much interested in this because yes. the primarily getting information and functioning based on that information is something the youth have constantly shown a lot of interest in, given that social media and things like that exist, this information. Um, the flow of it, the mediums are pretty open and pretty wide. Um, how does that, let's, let's talk about the commission also, but how does this uh, act together with the commission increase the engagement of the youth? Like yeah. how can the youth engage with the commission or utilize the act and move, proceed from that point onwards? Is it particularly something that it's, uh, is it only up to maybe a certain, you said it's citizens, students, anyone can, but yes. is it on, on a practical, on a functional level, yeah. is it only maybe organizations that use this? Uh, no, I think even, even I mean, as you said, like even a student, even a small child, you know, they can uh, uh, use RTIs. That means uh, right to information, they can use their, uh, uh, you know, right. And uh, if they go to the commission level, right, so they kind of, uh, so that they, they, are, they kind of have the, app, app, they are uh, like appellate body. Right. So, if you if you don't get the information, then you have to go to the, you know, like commission level. You you go to the designated officer first, and then you go to the commission, and they decide whether this information should be given or not. Mm -hmm. Right. And also, we I mean, they don't function as a court of a court. Okay. Right. So you don't have to be accompanied by a lawyer to discuss or the to argue your case. Right. Mm -hmm. You can simply you know you can simply say that you are asking for this information and you are not given it. Or I have the right to get this information because of these these reasons. Right. So if the commission is convinced, actually they will definitely you know help you to get those information. So since you asked about the youth, right. Mm -hmm. So if you look at like, uh, I uh, in in one case in in our experience, there was one incident where uh, one uh, college uh, one uh, one student came to us, and actually she wanted to know whether uh, know her uh, O level results, right? So she thought that it was altered or something has happened from the in inside, right? So we facilitated the RTI, and when it it went to the commission level, right? So uh, we actually um, went on behalf of her as well. So she was also there. So actually, the commission ordered the education ministry of education to actually show the marks. So okay. she actually got to know her marks. So mm -hmm. that was the first time I think uh, wa wa a student uh, came to like mm -hmm. you know got to know her mm -hmm. marks. Mm -hmm. So that way, uh, I think it. I mean this. Uh, RTI process, the, even the process, even the application, these are very simple. Even you don't have to file an R RTI using the application given by the commission because the RT because we, we call it RTI 1, that's the application. In the application itself, it says you don't have to, it is not mandatory to use the application. Even you can write a letter, okay. you know, a letter saying that I need this information. So the process is not that complex. Not complex. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it's about the awareness because when, it, when, when we talk about law, people think that it's very complicated and you, you know that only, you know, a uh, set of people yeah. can use it. Yeah. But when it comes to the RTI, it's very simple. You have to ask the right questions and the commission uh, you know, uh, if it goes to the commission level, they will, mm -hmm. you know, take the decision, uh, they will make a decision on that one. Mm -hmm. So, um, 
uh, I, I yeah. want to interrupt you there. Um, you did touch on the process in multiple questions that uh, we, we were talking about. But if you could just briefly elaborate again. If I do have a question pertaining to one public authority, I yes. firstly, if you could tell us the process again to get information, yes. what you should do? Yes. So, Danitu, uh, let's say for an example, I'll, I'll, I'll let's say uh, I'm the applicant and you are the public authority, yeah. right? So, in the public authority, there's a information office, okay. right? So, I have to uh, send an RTI, send an RTI to the information officer, right? Mm -hmm. So it could be in writing, or if you, uh, let's say, yeah, let's say you cannot write or something like that, mm -hmm. then the information officer is uh, bound by the law to write or, oh. uh, you know, like note down your information request on behalf of you, you right? So therefore, let's say I send the RTI uh, application to the information officer, and that information has to, uh, uh, so, information officer needs to acknowledge the application mm -hmm. right and then within 14 working days he or she needs to decide whether to give uh, you know uh, information or not so let's say i don't get the information then i can go to the designated officer designated officer means within the authority there will be a higher officer you know like who who can take an individual decision on looking the at the decision of the information officer whether uh, he or she has taken a right decision, then uh, designated officer. I can go to the designated officer. I I, I, I don't, I'm, I'm not going to mention the time period because it might complicate it, yeah, the yeah, thing. True. So, and then if, if you if you are not satisfied the uh, decision of the designated officer, then you get to go to the uh, commission. commission, okay. right? And uh, after the commission, you can also go to the Court of Appeal as well. Mm -hmm. so, so that's if, how if the public authority also disagrees with the commission's result, they also have to go to the Court of Appeal in that case. Yes, instance. exactly. All right. So the binding nature is quite clear when we when we talk about the RTI in that in that scenario. I, I we might have to talk a bit about this with our next segment also. But on a practical level, you you gave me a good explanation outside about this about how how well the commission has been functioning, and you know the the sort of turnover rate has been pretty high. How yeah. On a practical operational level, can you give us about the success rate of the commission? How do you comment about it? Yes. So, actually, uh, recently we got to know that, like, uh, out of the out of the uh, uh, three thousand, more than three thousand uh, uh, appeals that they got during the two thousand seventeen and twenty twenty one period, uh, I think in uh, in eighty five percent of the cases they have disclosed, they have ordered to disclose the information. Mm -hmm. So that number itself is uh, speaks for itself right mm -hmm. you know like so uh, the commission uh, so that's why i told you like we need to have an independent commission so if they are biased towards one party then it defeats the purpose of the rti law mm -hmm. so since you mentioned the uh, commission uh, dani like uh, this uh, the current uh, commission the term of the current uh, commission comes to an end in, ne uh, in uh, next month. Mm -hmm. So uh, then the president of Sri Lanka get the chance to or get the power to appoint uh, commissioners, mm -hmm. five commissioners to the uh, uh, five, five commissioners to yeah. the RTI commission. So uh, we kind of this uh, started, uh, so according to the RTI law, it says that, you know, before the 19th, uh, before the, uh, I mean, under the 19th amendment, right? the Constitutional Council was supposed to uh, recommend names for the commission mm -hmm. and then president appoints the uh, all the recommended names, right? But now it has changed mm -hmm. with the 20th Amendment. Mm -hmm. Now president, president can, can uh, it says president shall seek observations. Mm -hmm. Even though uh, he has to seek uh, observations from the Parliamentary uh, Council, which replaces the Constitutional Council uh, under 19th Amendment, uh, president is not bound to appoint those, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, recommendations okay. or recommended names, right? Or recommended people. So, however, the 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 appointment process is very democratic mm -hmm. in uh, in the RTI law. Okay. So, if you look at the RTI law, it says RTI Act. It says that uh, by association of Sri Lanka and civil society organisations and also organisations of editors, publishers, and media persons mm. they can actually recommend names okay. for the commission right so the parliamentary council the pa under the 20th amendment they have to uh, you know select one name from each category and send it to the president president okay. and the president can actually either consider it or 
or we can like right. you know so there is the there yes, is the process that is available the within yes. the current law so we can go into a bit of a detail within that scenario as well as far as uh, we have heard the, there is no proper consensus pertaining now how this will continue which is why we are talking about this subject as well um, we'll take a very short break and we will um, go into details about how the commission functions and how the process goes ahead uh, stay with us here on Gen XYZ Then XYZ, we are in conversation with the programs manager at Transparency International of Sri Lanka, uh, Lakvijay Bandar. Um, you gave us a good breakdown of how the act works and then the empowering of the commission from that point onwards. And so a unique role that is being played by the commission in this scenario. My next question is going to be pertaining to now. You did say certain amount of information is protected. If you can again revisit that point and mention to us. What about personal data? What about the issues that come up when, when there is certain individuals or certain certain types of information that has to be protected in these scenarios? Will it be? Is there a summary sort of hearing in the commission where they can reject certain claims from like the basis? So you know how how does that kind of personal data being protection? How does it work? Yes. So uh, that's a good question. Daniel. Like you know. Uh, this uh, RTI Act itself gives a you know yeah, you know protects the personal information, right? So they it has a process laid down how uh, when it comes to the personal information or uh, information uh, given by the third party in confidence, right? So how that can be protected? So for an example, so in uh, Section Five One A of the uh, you know law uh, the RTI, RTI Act, it says uh, personal information. Can be if we, uh, let's if the uh, if the application is uh, or, or in the application if someone is asking for personal information mm -hmm. that can be rejected, okay. right? If it uh, so that's the process, yeah. right? And uh, it says that if the personal information is not connected or has no relation to any public interest, right, or any public activity, or it unwarrantedly like. Um, unwarrantedly, or it, it affects the personal uh, uh, information or the, the privacy of the people, okay. right? Then, information officer, right, can take a decision either not either, either to reject the information. Right? Should at that point they mention the reason why this rejection happens? Exactly. Yeah. So the uh, the law case law of the commission, uh, you know, uh, tells us like. Uh, if they reject the application, information application, if the information application is rejected by the uh, uh, information officer, that person has to specifically mention what are the reasons for the rejection. Okay. Right? And also, I told you about this, uh, you know, uh, confidential information, exactly. and there's another process to that. You know, these are these are a bit uh, linked, the yeah, section yeah. 51A and the section 29, mm -hmm. uh, which talks about. Uh, if a third party uh, gives a, gives information in uh, in confidence to a public authority, then they are protected, mm -hmm. right? And if someone is asking access for that information, then information officer needs to write to the you know the person who uh, gave the information asking for the consent. That means let's say you gave the information, uh, you gave your information to the public authority in confidence. And you have to give your consent in order to disclose that. So that's the protection within the RTI Act mm -hmm. uh, given to the personal information. Okay, um, that's a pretty comprehensive process, one would say, in, in because this is also a key issue that was in contention for the past few days. Um, now I want to move into a more generic standpoint within this discussion and talk about. Now you did say the RTI Act evolved, but because there was a requirement for information to be spread. Based on its functionality over the past few years, reflecting on that, how have you seen it working? How have you seen it making some, some form of positive impact or positive strength towards strength forward in getting this information out, in uh, in acting upon that information? Mm -hmm. How how do you say it? Uh, you know, creates some form of difference. 
I think uh, with the with the enactment of the RTI law in 2016, uh, something that we all uh, all worried about, uh, Danil, because uh, uh, let me t tell you this story, right? So in India, right? In India, uh, people at the grassroots level they actually ask for this particular right. We need that right to information, right? But in Sri Lanka, it actually it was not the public. So I, I told you like civil societies, journalists, so many people worked on it, but there was no like, you know, demand, you know, actual demand from the, uh, you know, uh, public, uh, you know, like, uh, therefore they had, when they enacted the law, the awareness among the people was very minimum. So, uh, so the government, uh, RTI commission, the line ministry, and also the civil society sector, they had a like, you know, responsibility or had a, yes, a social, responsibility social responsibility to, you know, you know, inform, the public, inform the public, you know, how important this particular law is and how they can use it, right? Yeah. And so far, I would say that, I mean, people are actually using RTI. That's very, I mean, we are very happy to see it, you know, like, I told you like 3,000 appeals were heard like during a, you know, three yeah. years period, right? Three to four year period. So that itself shows that how much, you know, how many people are using this art, uh, right to information law, mm -hmm. right? This particular right. And if you look at, uh, you know, like social problems like, you know, corruption, it could be, uh, you know, pension cases, it could be, you know, uh, issues regarding uh, promotions, yeah. and also it could be, uh, you know, like uh, road development in your village. So in any time, any, any kind of, or, or in these situations, people actually can use uh, RTIs to get information. And sometimes it might lead to, uh, you know, uh, it might, it might get, it might give you a solution as well, but sometimes you can get the information and then you can go to the court of law or and you can go to other commissions, independent commission to get the problem solved. Mm -hmm. So likewise, this is very important in, in terms of increasing the transparency, mm -hmm. you know, within the public sector and also increasing the accountability. Mm -hmm. So that's, yeah. yes. Um, some important points there. Again, I, I move back to like the initial question I had when, when we spoke about the right being entrusted within the constitution itself. Yeah. If we were to pinpoint, okay, this is the difference that happened, is it the clarification of the procedure or is there another step that has been taken forward in terms of having a commission involved when it comes to the RTI? My question basically is, with the RTI Act yeah. being put into play, what next step that you, can you say is this was the most important step forward from the constitutional right that was given to the people? So, I mean, uh Constitution, uh, Constitution uh, establishes or like protects the fun, uh, you know, fundamental basic, right. Yeah. Yes, basic, it's the basic, uh, basic law in the country, and it, it protects the fundamental right of the people. And that means right to information, right? And the the RTI Act is is a kind of a like an extension of it, extension of that particular right. That means you, you looking at the RTI Act, you know exactly how you can file an RTI. Okay. Right, and there there are two sides to this: demand side and also the supply side. Right, so the demand side means the citizen. So the citizens, like looking at the RTI law, citizens get to know, like, okay, this is how I'm going to, how I have to, like, file the RTI. Mm -hmm. This is how I have to appeal if I'm not satisfied with the, sure. uh, uh, you know, like a decision of the information of the officer or the designated officer or it could be the commission. So a citizen can go to the court of appeal till court of appeal to get those information, right? And also that's from the demand side, right? And also from the supply side, the information officer, it, 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 it's uh, according to that, the information officer has to be uh, appointed and also another, uh, as I said to before, like designated officer also has to be appointed within the public authorities. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it gives you the guideline to how the, you know, in order to facilitate the process of RTI, how the public authority should act. So that's how it works. And also uh, towards, I mean, and also within that, it gives the commission the powers. Uh, powers that are like prosecution and also right to hear uh, appeals likewise. Okay. And also something that is very um, important, uh, Danidu, like uh, proactive disclosure. This concept of proactive disclosure is also included within the RTI law. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. Proactive disclosure means that means there are two types of disclosures: reactive disclosure and the proactive disclosure. Reactive disclosure means I send you, you an ask, RTI, yeah. then you uh, give the information. Yes, exactly. Proactive disclosure means uh, the public authority doesn't have to wait till someone asks you the information. You volunteer to give it. Exactly. So that's how that that's very important within the uh, uh, that's something that very important within the RTI law that we see today, mm -hmm. and also uh, regulations. Mm -hmm. Regulations issued by the Lime Ministry also gives a guideline. You know what are the proactive disclosure measures, minimum measures that the public authorities can take. Mm -hmm. For an example, procurement details budget details and also public services given to the people you know these kind of things can be proactively disclosed then the people actually know exactly the, what the public authorities are doing the engagement increases yes yeah. exactly um, i think even when i went through the act something that i did say is they they would mention i think towards the end to not consider any part within this actual limit the provision of information, which sort of is, goes very well with the proactive yes. disclosure of information. Uh, a few important things that I want to touch on there. We'll take a very short break. You're with Gen XYZ. Stay with us until we we'll go into our last segment. This is the last segment. We are in conversation with the Programs Manager of Transparency International Sri Lanka, Lakwijay Bandar. Um, towards our last segment, I want to, you know, take the, make it a bit more relaxed in terms of how you approach this. But uh, clarification that I would like to make is not only public entities, but this this form of uh, proactive engagement has been open to even private entities. Yes. And that is also an important aspect because we see that towards, in the, in the in the past few years, even websites, even brochures, even their social media pages when it comes to a public entity became much more active. It has much more information that is available. And you know, that push was generally something, even for journalists, it was so much more important than what it was before. So I guess, you know, those, those steps forward has really been something that really you know, makes that engagement increase. Does this trickle down to you know other areas like uh, private entities and what incentives are created in those scenarios? Yes. So uh, to answer your question, Dani, though, like uh, private entities, again, not all the private uh, private entities are coming under this, yeah. right? So there are like few qualifications to this. So for an example, this I told you like public entities, so public Listed authorities, public. like you can ask information from uh, public authorities, mm -hmm. right? But not from a private company. Right? But there are like, if you look at the interpretation given to the public authority, it includes, uh, you know, like it includes uh, companies which are owned by, even it could be partly or even if uh, by the government, right? So there is a, if there is a, let's say, private public partnerships, there are so many companies like that, right? Sure. So those kind of companies comes under the, you know, RTI Act. They are covered under the RTI Act. And also, for an example, uh, non-governmental organizations. So you know, non-governmental organizations, they are not a, you know, you don't refer it to as a public authority in the normal, you know, sense, right? Exactly. But under the RTI Act, if the, because the, 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 the argument is that even non-governmental organizations, that means civil societies are also using taxpayers' money. You know, it could be either taxpayers' money of this country or some other country, right? So in that kind of a situation, if you are doing something for the public, then we are coming under, we are again coming under the uh, public uh, authority, the, the, the term public authority. So therefore, in, for those kind of institutions, obviously, yes, they have a, you know, obligation under the RTI law to, you know, comply with the RTI Act, right? But for the private companies also, I think it's, 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 it's a good uh, guideline you know, these information that we are trying to like uh, disclose mm -hmm. to the people. So they can actually, uh, if they won't, actually if they won't, they can actually look at the information, uh, like, uh, you know. It's a good example that's provided. Sorry? It's a good example that yes, comes can follow. exactly. Yeah. So they can actually follow the proactive disclosure guidelines given in the rules and also in the, you know, uh, in, the, in the RTI Act. 
and they can like follow those uh, guidelines mm -hmm. and let me tell you another example of uh, since we talk talking about uh, we are talking about proactive disclosure yeah. so under the section 10 of the rti act it actually says um, let's say uh, let's say any ministry uh, doing a, a project which which is over 100000 uh, us dollars or 500000 uh, rupees right then that information actually that information has to be disclosed to the public uh, public before the commencement uh, before three months of the commencement of the P, uh, project right but we don't see it happening mm -hmm. unfortunately right so that way actually if let's say let's say uh, there's a project uh, happening and it affects the people or you have to evacuate the people yeah. then they actually know that this project is coming and they can actually get ready to this and also they can fight for their you know rights as well so these kind of uh, you know, this proactive disclosure is very important and if the government or if the public authorities are following these things then it actually it will definitely make their life easier as well because they don't have to like you know every time they don't have to wait till someone you know ask for the information they can obviously they can use even website even they can use because in india there are like uh, you know examples where they have uh, you know put up billboards and also posters likewise you know like how they have you know practically disclosing yeah, uh, yeah. using those means to practically disclose uh, information yeah. that's i think a, a pretty much a very good habit <laughs> for companies as yes. well. Uh, moving towards the end of our segment, I want to touch on this now. There was an objective in the bill or the act was brought into like light, it was brought into society. What are the long term objectives of, you know, really disclosure? Yeah. Have, have given this authority, empowering people with this authority, creating procedures that are easier. What are the long term objectives there and where do you see it heading in terms of a more general stance, you know? We did speak about how it has been helpful, but in terms of the youth, in terms of society in general, what are the long-term goals we can achieve through something like the RTI? I would say, Danidu, like uh, it's actually through the RTI law, it opens up the government. Okay. You know, like I told you, like secrecy was the norm previously, yeah. now it opens up everything, right? Then when you open up the, you know, like uh, these, uh, the whole, the, all the information that the government has, it kind of, you know, it increases the transparency, mm -hmm. right? And it obviously increases the accountability as well. Because for an example, uh, previously, let's say you are a, before 2017, if you didn't get a promotion in the public sector, and uh, if you know that you are entitled to that promotion, there was no way of doing it. Either you have to go for a fundamental right case, other than that, you can't get the information. You know, everyone doesn't have the luxury of going to the courts, Good, right? Sir. So now, actually, you can, or, or either uh, uh, right uh, human rights commission also. I forgot that. Mm -hmm. But now you can simply you can file an RTI, right? File an uh, file an RTI. In the commission, and, is it? Uh, no, with the with, with the, the information office, office, office right? Okay. Uh, you can file an uh, file an RTI and get the information, and you can see even qualifications of the other you know candidates as well, okay. even the scores. Uh, or the marks given to the other candidates as well. So this obviously incru uh, increases this transparency, uh, you know, within the public sector and also the accountability. And it, at the end of the day, it helps to reduce the corruption. Okay. You know, when it comes to corruption, right? It, it it's it's like a virus, yeah. right? It, it it spreads everywhere. It's in the private sector. It's in the public sector. It's in the you know every everywhere you everywhere you go, you see corruption, right? Mm -hmm. So this is a good solution to you know reduce the corruption in Sri Lanka, right? So this, if you look at the problem of corruption, it does not, you know, it even though it does not affect directly sometimes to you, it affects the whole sit, whole country, you know, as a whole. So it creates economical problems. It can create social problems, right? So by by in the in the I mean going forward. We are actually asking even our younger generation to use the RTI, all the citizens to use the RTI and, you know, like get the information. Yeah. Because if you have the information, then you, are, you have a power. Mm -hmm. You can actually talk about it. If you don't have it, then how can you like argue uh, something, right? Mm -hmm. So for an example, let me give you a few examples how the youth can use RTI, right? Mm -hmm. Let's say in your, uh, in your area, a road is 
uh, is constructed and it's not up to the you know like uh, it happens every day like it's not up to the uh, standards or the quality so using RTI even you can ask for the samples of the materials that's very you know it, it's very interesting right yeah. asking for a sample so that can be done and also let's say you are, you have applied for a you know government uh, job and you didn't get it but you know that you are entitled to it right you can then uh, you can send an RTI and get all the information like qualifications scores and everything right and if you are a student right you yeah, can use your sure. RTIs yeah. and also if your village if your uh, the, the hospital in your village or the school in the village uh, doesn't have like human resources then you can file it these are some of the success stories that we have mm -hmm. and people had actually used this RTI to get promotion uh, like you know like there to get their promotions that were entitled to that they were originally entitled to and to get uh, you know like uh, government jobs that were originally entered but they were not given in the first instance likewise and also like to get uh, you know your you know uh, the the road in the village to fixed get it done problem. like fixed <laughs> and everything so there are limitless opportunities that you can use RTI and uh, increase the transparency and reduce the corruption in the country. Right, we have like um, like one minute left. I want to get your take on uh, basically as a message if you were to give it to the youth primarily yes. in uh, response to something like the RTI. I think you did touch on this, but if you put it on a nutshell, why should we proceed ahead and you know really utilize this specific right in these instances? Yes. So I think Danido, like the youth is the future in this country right so we should have a you know like in order to like in order to have a good life in order to have a good life decent life in this country we need to have a country without corruption or free from corruption right so we i know like the youth is uh, you know like they are doing you know like they are not into these things mm -hmm. most of the time Sometimes we are on mm -hmm. facebook you know we are on twitter, uh, twitter instagram but we don't look into these things we don't know our rights right so people i think youth especially the youth should know their right especially the right to know right to you know right right to information they should know about it mm. and if you know about it you can use it in yeah, your <laughs> with, during your lifetime yeah. you can use it at anywhere so you can actually fight your injustice not only in the facebook or the social media but in the real life as well and you can help the people of this country all right I think that is very, very well put uh, as a conclusive note. Lakvijay Bandar, the Programs Manager at Transparency International Sri Lanka. Thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you very much. Thank okay. you. Um, I, be, I would like to thank our viewers for staying with us and it was a very interesting program. I should say a lot of things that you ironed out and broke down for us. Um, stay with us on Gen XYZ when we return next week and we bring in another contemporary motion that is relevant to you. I'm Daniel Tanvasam. Have a great night and join us again on next week on Gen XYZ.